Okay, here we have the infamous Honeywell's zone valve. Probably the most common zone valve for hot water boilers out there. We're going to take this thing apart. We're going to look at how it ticks. Okay, with the cover off, here's your little motor. That's the drive motor that opens the valve. And it's a gear motor, so it rotates quite slowly. Uh, it turns uh, half a turn, I think, to open and close. So, very small motor, uh, gear reduction, spring return. Notice those springs on there. So, it goes all the way uh, open and then it returns closed with the springs if you disconnect the power of the motor. Okay, this is a wiring for this. If you look here, TR goes to transformer. That uh, terminal will always have 24 volt power. And then we have THTR and we have TH. Okay, THTR is simply the other side of the line. It doesn't actually go any place inside the valve. It's just a terminal point. Thermostat is TH. So I'll take my wire from here. I'll go to a thermostat if that's how I'm controlling this thing. When the thermostat calls for heat, then power will come from THTR to TH and we'll start the motor. It'll rotate out uh, until the valve is open, and then it closes this end switch. Now the end switch is important on this thing, and they're used for a number of things, uh, most of which uh, I would expect this to turn on a pump, circ pump. It could turn on the burner. It could do both. But when this thing gets full open this end switch closes so I can simply wire that with the uh, the circulating pump with the burner uh, with the control uh, the temperature control whatever but the the system needs to know that this valve is open so it can begin heating the water now we could have it set up so that it starts the pump and then the temperature control will simply start the boiler when the temperature drops. Uh, there's a number of ways you can set this up. Okay, so the end switch closes when the uh, valve is open. Okay, now here's a little doohickey in the bottom of this. It says auto and manual open. If you want to manually open this thing, you can do it like that and drop it down in that little slot down there and it'll stay open. Now it won't stay open forever. If I do get power to this thing and the motor turns on, it will lift this out and this old boy's kind of tired. Uh, there is this you can see the spring returning and it'll actually go back to auto so if you want to manually open these things to bleed or something like that then you could certainly do that with uh, with that little control that's kind of nice to have most of them have something like that anyway but remember this thing is powered open spring return Okay, I pulled the uh, power head off of this thing, and I want to show you how this valve works inside. Okay, what we have here is a ball, and the ball simply rotates like this as the when the motor uh, energizes, it moves the ball. Now. If you look in here, okay, if you look in here, you can see that's a somewhat restricted hole. And on the other end, 
the hole is not really restricted. And this also looks like it's maybe kind of machined. Okay, what the ball does is rotate up against this hole. So it turns against the flow of water because if you look at this thing you can see an arrow in the bottom and so the uh, as this rotates back and forth this is going to rotate up and close the hole and then it's going to rotate down to uh, open. That way it does not hammer because uh, Water hammer's been a big deal on these things. Uh, I'll probably explain water hammer a little better in another video, but uh, that's what this was designed to do. That this actually rotates up against that hole and just kind of slowly uh, closes it off. Uh, you can replace the power heads on these things. Uh, Rather than replace these valves, the valve portion of this very, very seldom fails. This fails a lot, especially if it gets water on it. Uh, and we'll talk a little more about uh, how you'd install these valves and so on uh, in another video. But anyway, that's uh, short and sweet how the Honeywell zone valve works.